What's your creepiest glitch in the Matrix story? I remember being pretty young like 9 or 10 and I was the car park of a pub in England. I remember seeing someone in their teens in the window of a house looking over the car park. They waved at me and I felt like I knew them somehow. My parents asked who I was waving at and I said just some lady in the window over there. Didn't think much of it. Fast forward 10 years. I was at my nan's new house. I remember walking into her room, which I never was allowed to do, going to the window. I then realized I was in the house looking over that same parking lot and remembering that interaction years before. Then a girl around 9 or 10 who was in said car park waved at me and I waved back. I felt like I knew her. When I was a teenager, my family lived in a big 115-year-old brick house. Plenty of creepy stuff happened but one night I was heading to bed when the door between the first floor kitchen and the basement stairs absolutely slammed shut. It had a unique sound that I recognized immediately as the kitchen slash basement door. There were no windows open that could have caused a draft. Our dog was asleep on the second floor. I was on the second floor. My parents were both asleep in the third floor attic which had been converted to a master bedroom. None of us could have shut the door. Duck and terrified, I worked up the courage to go investigate, carrying my hilariously teeny pocket knife for protection. As I went downstairs I turned on every light. When I reached the kitchen, the door was wide open. Even more freaked out I ran back up to bed, leaving the lights on. A minute or two later, I heard a definite, shh, okay from downstairs. I laid in bed and was ready to accept my demise. Eventually I somehow feel asleep and in the morning I was there first downstairs, I woke up before my parents and dog, and found that the lights were all off and the basement door had been shut again. Removed a painting from the wall during a late evening cleaning, put it away and returned to the wall to see a never before seen painting on the same spot, put a chill down my spine. About a year ago me and my cousin visited Los Angeles. We were driving around using Google Maps and after missing our third or fourth exit we swear we both heard it sigh loudly before it rerouted us. We freaked out and made sure our driving was on point the rest of the ride. The rest of the trip there if we missed any of our exits or turns we always apologized to Google so hopefully she would know we were just morons. I used to have a recurring dream as a teenager every night for months. I was sitting at a table on the patio of a restaurant, I was out there alone waiting for my food. A homeless man comes up to the other side of the patio and asks for change. I'm digging in my wallet for a couple dollars and then I hear tires screech and look up to see a crash in an intersection near the restaurant. I run out there to see if I can help and as I run out into the road I get hit by a car and wake up at the impact. After a while the dream stopped and I put it out of my mind. Fast forward to me being 28 and sitting at an on the border, on the patio waiting for my food. A homeless guy comes walking past the restaurant but doesn't stop and ask for change. It makes me think about that dream though and I start to feel uneasy. Shortly after, I hear the tires screech and I see a wreck happen in the intersection near the restaurant. I begin to run out there but stop at the sidewalk and look out towards incoming traffic and there is an SUV not slowing down. She was on her phone and blew through the intersection completely unaware of what had just happened. Ran out and checked on the people. Everyone was fine. This happened around 1991. It's the middle of the night. I'm standing in my sister's living room and it must be a full moon, because even though it's around 1 a.m. and the lights are off, I can see clearly. There's a mixing bowl with popcorn kernels in the bottom on the floor in front of the TV and some rental VHS in a pile nearby. I hear a noise and turn around to see my sister's normally very friendly Labrador retriever looking like Cujo. Fangs bared, snarling, hackles raised. Suddenly there's a bright flash of light and I wake up like I hit the bed from a great height. I think that was a weird dream. Eventually, I fall back to sleep and in the morning I call my sister, planning to tell her the story, but she preempts me by telling me about the weird thing that happened in the night. They woke up to the sound of the dog snarling at about 1 a.m., her husband thought there was a prowler in the house, got a gun and went to find the dog. She was standing in the living room snarling at the middle of the room. He couldn't see anyone, so he flipped on the light. No one was there, the dog instantly stopped snarling and walked to her bed like nothing had happened. He checked the property and went back to bed. We talked a bit and I found out they watched some rental movies and of course we had popcorn, why? My sister is a little woo at times, so I decided not to tell her about my night. She lived about 450 miles away by the way. 
I wouldn't say that this was creepy, but it's definitely one of the most quaintly surreal things I've ever experienced. So, back in 2016, I was injured at work and for about six months my life consisted of going to physical therapy and being confined to bed until I could walk again. With that in mind, I had a lot of time to read books. One of the books that I was reading was X Heroes, by Peter Kleins. Now I don't know about anyone else, but when I read a book I like to cast the characters in my head, coming up with how they look. One of the minor characters in this book was named Ilya and, because I know someone named Ilya, and because the book is set in Los Angeles where I live, the Ilya in the book became the Ilya that I knew in my imagination. But then, something strange started to happen. The Ilya in the book made specific references to movies like Aliens, a movie which the Ilya I know is a huge fan of. The Ilya in the book was a big fan of firearms, as the Ilya that I know is. Put into words, these details seem slim. But there was something so strange about the character in this book that I eventually reached out to the Ilya that I knew to ask about it. Turns out that Ilya knows the author, Peter Kleins, who had put him in the book. What are the odds that I would choose to buy a random book, with a story that takes place essentially on my street in Los Angeles, and features someone I know in real life as a minor character? That blew my mind, and it's easily one of the most surreal experiences I've had. I died. I saw it, I lived it. Either it was another world with a version of me that died I saw or I'm going crazy but I died. We had a pep rally in school and after it was finished we had to go back to class. Well, my friend and I were not into that so we wanted to to across the street to Sonic. Across the school there is not heavy traffic, but if you don't pay attention you could get hit. Well I remember walking with him and he dropped something so I went across the street first. I just saw a red Tahoe heading right for me and I got hit. I remember everything. I remember gasping for air, I remember waking up and sleeping again. Then nothing. All of a sudden I was back in the stadium again and the exact same words came out of the principal's mouth. My friend wanted to go get Sonic but I was freaking out. Was asking him everything. I thought it had to be a dream, so I went with him just to see what would happen. He dropped his stuff again and I waited. To my horror, that same red Tahoe showed up. I told him that I'm going back to school, I ain't dying again. I can still see the other version of me on that street just messed up. Not even moving. I was on vacation on Florida visiting a friend, we were walking on the beach on a perfectly sunny day when everything went black for a second. I think it was weird but explained it away thinking that my eyes were playing tricks on me until he looked at me and said did everything go black for a second. One day when I was about 8, I didn't go to school because I was sick. My friend was supposed to bring me homework but he never came. My granddad came home from work and he told me that that friend was dead, I was devastated. That night I had a dream. I was with my friend at a playground next to our school and we were talking, then he told me that he is safe and it didn't hurt when that car hit him. The next day my mother wanted to talk to me about that situation and she asked me if I wanted to know what happened. I told her that I know everything because my friend told me. She thought that my granddad told me but he did not. He said that he did not want to tell me without her knowing it. That night I had a dream again and I was talking to him again. We were playing and having fun and he told me that he really had to go and we won't see each other ever again. The next day was his funeral and I really haven't had a dream about him ever since. Might get buried but oh well. When I played baseball as a kid, they were handing out the trophies at the end of the season. They called out the names of the kids while we received our trophies. There happened to be a kid with the same name as me. We met after the ceremony because it was weird since our last name isn't a very common one. We had the same birthday and everything. We looked alike, both our dads were named Derek and both of our sisters were named Lily. As a kid, I found it cool. As an adult, I find it cool and also disturbing. About two years ago, I went to collect my husband from the ferry after work. My husband got into the car and as I was driving very slowly out of the car park we both noticed two people standing a few meters in front of our car. It looked as though they were strangers, older looking professionals, both walking to their separate cars in different areas of the car park. The man was reaching into his side bag and the lady was further ahead than the man, with her head turned to the right. I know the exact positions they were in because they were completely frozen on the spot. My husband and I sat there watching the frozen strangers, not saying anything to each other and then all of a sudden it was like someone pressed play and the two strangers just continued on like nothing had happened. My husband and I promised to each other that we would never forget how weird the experience was. 
Every night I go to bed about two hours before my husband. I always wake up when he comes into the room. One night he was gaming with a friend and it was hours later I heard him sneak into the room and crawl across the floor so he could pop up and scare me. I felt the floor kind of shake and felt him bump clumsily against the side of the bed in the dark. I held out my hand and asked him not to scare me, I was already scared enough and begged him to just take my hand and come to bed. I couldn't see anything in the room, but knew he was there and just waited for him to jump up so I could move on and go back to sleep. That's when I heard him talking to his friend in the other room. I was frozen. I know there's sleep paralysis or lucid dreaming or something that explains this, but I would have sworn on my son's life that someone had crawled across the floor and jostled the bed. Eventually I worked out of the fear enough to grab my phone and text my husband to come in and turn on the lights and check under the bed. But holy shit, it boggles me how real it felt.